Welcome to Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show. We talk with somebody important in the community every week, brought to you by Hy-Vee, both in Osage Beach and Jefferson City. And uh, one of my favorite topics on this show is local history, lake area history. And we've got our local historian here, Bill Mulder, with us. How are you, sir? Chris, I'm doing great. Good to be back with you again. It is so good. I mean, we could sit down probably for days and just talk about what we try to squeeze into these shows. We certainly could. You know? And that's just local stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me started on state history. <laughs> hey, and then we could go to national history and all that. So history is just so fun if you, uh, you know, if you get into that kind of a thing. So, but we focus on local history, lake area history. And uh, in previous shows, we've talked about our area way back when, you yes, know, sir. I mean, when uh, the Indians were here right. and they weren't, they didn't like to be called the Osage Indians. They liked to be called something. I yeah, don't know. You, else, you huh? called them something. I don't remember <laughs> I what I, that was. I've slipped that since, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there was the Indians and then, you know, settlers coming in and then, of right. course, the, the rivers and the ties and the iron smelter and uh, the sorghum. Mm -hmm. So we talked about all of that. Right. Uh, and and now all of a sudden somebody comes up with an idea for the dam. So how yes, did sir. that all get started? Well, this actually started as we know the dam. Now we think about Union Electric. Mm hmm. It actually started with a guy in Kansas City who had this wonderful idea, why not build a dam down in the Osage Valley? He had it in a completely different spot. Really? Yes, sir. He was a further upstream, huh. but he was going to make money. He said this is a way to make a great amount of money. He was an engineer. He started to get investors, and then he went bankrupt. Ooh. So there, it was the end of the dream. Well, Union Electric knew about this thing. And they glommed on to the idea and said, why not do it? Now, the thing that makes this dream different than everybody else is this is, again, a privately owned lake. This is not a core lake. The way you can tell the difference right off the bat is the fact that you can build on the shoreline of this lake. Right. But you have to get your permissions from Union Electric because it is their property. And they said, let's build a lake. It was not for flood control, although that has been a help. This was strictly built to generate electricity, and most of it was going to the St. Louis area. That's what I've heard. Yeah. And, you know, they've got the, the power plants up there that are coal-fired, but those were costly, and they said, here is a great way to do this. So they got the money together, and they started doing this in the Great Depression. So this area was, it was seeing issues already, like everybody else across the country was. And here comes Union Electric in and said, we're going to do this, we're going to put money in your pockets. It was not well received hmm. because the farms and the homesteads were in the valley. Right. That's where the better land, crop land was for farming, growing row crops, whatever. And people were resistant to this. They said, we don't want to do this. How will we live? And there was a big pushback. Courts got involved. Eminent domain was used. And there was just a lot of problems. But it all got started. And then the big issue was, as they bought these out, whether you wanted to sell or not, people were losing their homes. Huh. They were being moved out of places. Maybe they had been for many, many generations. Yeah. And it just displaced them. They didn't know what to think. And the thinking was, there's nothing up on top of these ridge tops around here. That's all dry, rocky soil dirt. What are we going to do? Yeah. Well, they adapted. They got the money from the sale. And they said, wait a second, I have money. Now, some of these folks were smart. They only sold to a certain level. Yeah. They kept the level above 660 because Union Electric was not interested in that so much. Right, that's where the uh, high water of the lake would be. Uh, 660 is the top level that they are licensed to go to. They do go to 665 with a flood easement. Right. Which means we can flood you too bad. Yeah. So... Some of these folks were smart enough to say, let's hang on to that land. Let's not sell, let's just keep it. Well, they turned into multimillionaires because then they started selling off to people that wanted to build resorts, people that wanted to buy lake houses. Yep. I don't think those folks would ever dream in their imagination they would be selling land by the foot here along the lakeshore. Oh, yeah. I'm sure those folks, even back then, who know, well, we see the dream, we know there's money to be made, 
uh, it'd be fun to talk to them these days. So what do you think? And they would probably go, you're selling it by the foot. We sold it by the acres. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah, boy, times have changed. Times have certainly changed. And as they built the dam, not only the sale was a big thing for them to put money in their pockets, but they went to work in construction. And that kind of eased the pain for a few. Some of the other parts of the pain were the town of Lynn Creek, our county seat, mm -hmm. was flooded. Yep. It was moved up the hill, the county seat was, and the new town of Camdenton came to be. And that, the town of Camdenton, the original town, was right there at the square where 54 and now Business 5 come together. Right. That was the extent of the town and a few blocks around it, and it was owned by a guy named Bill Banner. He sold his farm. And that's, how, that's where Camdenton come from. Right. So today, when we look at Camdenton, we, we see a, a fairly bigger town. Yeah. But it was a tiny little postage stamp. It was right town. around the square back that then? That was it. Wow. Okay. Two blocks deep, maybe. So, I mean, this stuff is so cool. We're going to continue talking about uh, the, the, the time in our lake area when the dam came into being and how that all took place. Because all this is so, so interesting that you usually don't get to hear about. So we'll continue our conversation, local history with Bill Mulder right after this. It pays to be a senior and shop at Hy-Vee. It's the Hy-Vee Senior Discount. Your produce, snacks, household necessities, deli and bakery, mealtime favorites, and everything else in between. It's the High V Senior Discount seven days a week at High V in Osage Beach in Jefferson City, where it pays to be a senior. Most people don't know which direction they're heading when it comes to retirement. Whether they're still on the journey or already there, at SRG Financial, we have a process, the mile marker formula, that helps you pursue your work optional lifestyle so you can focus on what's most important to you like your family, are checking off those bucket list items. Start taking the first step toward finding your work optional lifestyle. Call us today at 573-302-7212. Want to create lifelong memories with the whole family? Check out Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. Voted the best recreational lake in the nation by readers of USA Today and 10 Best. Enjoy paddle boarding, tubing, boating, and PWCs. No boat, no problem. There are over 50 marinas nearby to rent you one. Or how about hiking at one of the nation's top state parks, exploring amazing caves, shopping, and a few rounds of golf. Find your family fun shine at funlake.com. Produced in cooperation with Missouri Division of Tourism. Welcome back to Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show. We've got our friend Bill Mulder, local historian, with us, and we're talking uh, today on this show. We give you multiple shows with Bill because there's so much history to talk about. So, uh, uh, so if you see him on TV, you might give it a few seconds because you probably haven't seen what he's talking about today. So we're talking about the building of the dam, the effects. And, and in the first segment, you were t talking about uh, to get the dam built, uh, they had to use eminent domain. They had to come in and basically take property away from people who didn't Correct. want to sell. Yeah, they, it was a fair market value, Yeah. but the courts were ruling the greater cause is to get this thing built, you will sell. Right. You will sell at this rate. Now, the good thing that they come up with was the fact that some of the rates were coming out of the St. Louis area. Yeah. That Because the courts could look at that and say, well, now, if we bought land in St. Louis... Here's what the rate would be. So some of these people got some pretty good money. Nice. Uh, the other thing that they got, if they wanted to, because the, when they were building the dam, they had to go in and clear certain size logs out yeah. of certain size height tree. They could take the logs. They were The landowner was allowed to take it. Right. But your house was burnt to the ground. The foundations were taken up the same way with Lynn Creek. Everything was raised down to the foundation. That's as much as they would allow for navigation. So there's not a ghost town down there. There is no ghost town. Okay. Uh, and we'll get into that in just a minute. There's a couple <laughs> of really good legends that circulate around this area. Yeah. That, that's what they are. They're truly legends. So there was a lot of work for everybody, not only physically constructing the structure, but clearing out that valley. Yeah. And that, was, that goes all the way up to Truman Dam, where they had to clear up the glaze, up the Nianguas, because... To get navigation, the feds said you got to do this. Now the interesting thing is this went so quick back then. They were 
they started in 1929, I believe. By 31, the lake was had water in it. It had full, yeah. Today, how long would it take to get the permits, do oh. the environmental impact studies? Could never get it done. No, and there was no basically no environmental impact studies. Right. It was just, okay, you're going to build a dam, you're going to build a lake, you got to do these things. So and one thing you said, too, uh, was that the first guy that had the idea for the dam wasn't in the place where it is now. Correct. It was further up the Osage. Upstream. Correct. And then he ran out of money and it didn't work, but then the electric company came in and said, hey, we, the dam's a good idea. Yes, they did. They said, look what we can do. And they were, of course, looking at it purely from a profit perspective. Yeah. There was none of this. Well, we would. I don't know if they even realized the impact that this dam and this sure. lake would have. Yeah. I don't know that they could have. Because, you know, as, as we're going to talk in a later segment, where we're at today and where we're going, how could they have foreseen no, that? No, couldn't. I've got this picture in my house of the Osage before the uh, the, you know, the water filled in and yes. then the Niangua. And it was just farmland. It was That's just valleys. Exactly. And there's no way you could see what was coming. No. You know? my, my family owned a bunch of land up on the Little Niangua. And they poo-pooed this whole thing. Yeah. It's not going to have an impact. And then the water come up over their fields. Yeah. And they said, wait a minute, how did this happen? Another thing that people didn't quite grasp is they were building the dam. And there's, there's always this uh, legend, and we'll get into that a little bit, that there's all kinds of cemeteries yeah. under the lake. And that is absolutely a legend. Really? Yes, sir. Hmm. All of the cemeteries that were established and well-known were dug up and moved to high ground. So there, some of the originals, like the old Lynn Creek Cemetery, yep. it still exists out there on Y Road. A lot of the cemeteries that were in the valley down there around Lynn Creek were picked up and moved out to the town of Roach. Mm -hmm. So if you're going out through uh, AA, there's an old cemetery on the left just after you come off 54. That was the Lynn Creek Cemetery part of it that was dug up and moved up there to that area. So when they dug it up, did they have to dig up all of the skeletons and everything and move yes. everything? And if they couldn't find any remains, there was just a headstone there, they took a certain amount of dirt and moved it. Really? Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. So uh, the dam comes in and all of a sudden, Lynn Creek is having to move up on the hill. Mm -hmm. That changes place. There was no Camdenton. No Camdenton. Uh, so they create Camdenton out yeah. of nothing. Camdenton was established in 1931. Okay. When the when the dam filled in. Yes, sir. Uh, Osage Beach wasn't Osage Beach. Uh, not until 1960s. Wow. Okay, it was a little. It was a town called Zebra, I guess. There before was a, the yep, there was a town there called Zebra. Okay, and that was in the, the floodplain as well. Lake Ozark came about as the dam was being built. That was part of the the construction village. Yeah, the actual construction village sat over on the east side of the dam, up on that big bluff. Yeah, kind of where Wilmore Lodge is. Kind of where Wilmore Lodge is. That was Wilmore Lodge was the headquarters for the folks building the dam, the engineers. Yeah. And they, they did use it for other purposes. And the funny thing is, if you take a good look at Wilmore Lodge, yeah. that is telephone poles and light poles. They were pulling that stuff out of the, the Pacific Northwest. And they cut those out there, they put it together, numbered it, took it down, put it on rail cars, shipped it here, and then put it together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Wow. That's probably one of the best buildings, that, in my opinion, we have here at the lake. Really? And then there's another building that was a headquarters building that's up the hill. I think it's a private residence now. Huh. But if you're standing looking at Wilmore Lodge, it's over to the left of Wilmore up on a hill. It's gated off. Huh. But they could look at the dam construction. And there's where the engineers would sit and... Yeah, they could Watch kind of it. see everything working right in front of them. There. Correct. How cool is that? Okay, so you see why we love Bill Mulder so much, because uh, there's so much information here uh, we could be talking for days. And we that's why we have him on multiple shows, because there's so much to talk about from the early days before the dam to what's happening right now. Yeah. And we're going to get into all of that. So um, his name is Bill Mulder. A local historian, and if people want to know more about you, where can they get that information? They can contact me at Bill underscore Mulder at iCloud.com. There you go. It's as simple as that. Thank you so much for joining us for this Lake TV Community Spotlight Show brought to you by hy Osage Beach and Jefferson City.